there we have a gallon and a half of peach peeled, pitted. That's a one case yield of number two peaches. Now that we have our peaches skinned and pitted, we're just going to mash them a little bit with a potato masher just so we don't have any massive chunks of fruit and we'll also make our measurements a little more accurate. We have our peach goo, our gallon measuring cup, the classic full sugar pectin. I find that uh, using this pectin as opposed to the low sugar variety tends to give me better color retention and better texture in my final product. So gallon of sugar, gallon of peaches, and the amount of pectin required for that is actually one cup plus two tablespoons. So we'll measure out one cup of our pectin, about like so, and then two tablespoons on top of that to get to our 18 tablespoons of pectin to gel one gallon of peaches just like that so if you just add this to your peaches in the pot you can get some clumping so I'll measure my sugar and I'll put a portion of the sugar in here to basically mix in with this dried pectin and that will prevent any clumping during that initial phase of the cook so there we have our entire gallon of organic cane sugar so it hasn't been force ripened with roundup if you buy jam in the grocery store it's probably made with genetically modified corn syrup so this is one of the reasons to do this at home so i'm going to add about a cup and a half or so of sugar into that pectin and we'll just stir that in to prevent any clumping of the pectin as it cooks. So to my gallon of peach, I'm going to add two tablespoons of ground cardamom. And then at the very end, we'll add some almond extract. This produces a really nicely flavored jam, a little bit exotic, not what you'll find on the average street corner. I have my large, heavy bottom stainless steel pot on medium heat. In goes all of this stuff. Three quarters of a cup or 12 tablespoons of lime juice. In. When we add the pectin, we don't want to just dump it in in one glop. We'll kind of sprinkle it in and stir it. So we don't have any clumping. And then we'll just bring this to a vigorous boil over medium heat. I want to stay on it so that it doesn't scorch. All right, so that's all mixed in. Now I'll just and stir this every couple of minutes. Once we get to that boil, we'll let it boil for a minute or two and then add all of our sugar. Our peaches are starting to get warm, getting a little bubbling there on the side. We have our jars covered with boiling water, our lids I mean, so they'll be nice and softened up. Jars are all washed, sterilized, in the rack, with our funnel. Basically want to let this boil for a couple of minutes. We've had our two minutes of cooking from that high boil. One massive bowl of sugar. Two massive bowls of sugar. So equal parts fruit and sugar. Just starting to return to a boil after the addition of our sugar. As you can see, 
the look of this almost completed jam is considerably different than the look of just mashed peaches. Got this clarification of the liquid part. And even though we have a gallon of peaches and a gallon of sugar, much of the sugar dissolves into suspension. So we'll end up with about a gallon and a half of finished product from our two gallons of starting material. And that should make a dozen pints. I've turned off the heat. You can see how this is starting to be gelatinous. Looks like we've got good pectin development there. And the last thing to do is to add about a tablespoon and a half of that almond extract and stir that in and we can pour it. Mm -hmm. 